So you see, that's why we should be able to rejoice with others yeah. when they're being exalted, when yeah. they're being promoted, yeah. when they're being lifted up. We should be able to, re to rejoice with them because it's their time. Yes, Amen. It's their time. Amen. It's not my time yet. Right. And maybe there are some things that God is still working out with me. Because one thing I love about the Lord, one thing that I love, He's not going to give you anything prematurely. Amen. He's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. You know, one of our personal friends, and, and we'll get him to come. He didn't. He wasn't able to come last year, so some things didn't didn't fall right, and so we had to end up counseling that. But uh, first thing again, our, our good friend, Minister Ernest Pugh. How many of y'all heard of Ernest Pugh? Yeah. Ernest Pugh is one of the, the big gospel singers that's out there today. Ernest Pugh was with us when we were in Texas, all sitting up under Apostle Holcomb. And Ernest used to always tell us, and he used to sing in the choir with First Lady McGee, sometimes he would lead songs, and Ernest used to always tell us about what he's doing now. He used to always tell us, well, I'm believing God, one day I'm going to be out there, and be saved, and being a blessing to people, and I'm going to travel all around. He spoke that back in the 90s. Back in the 90s. But now, here we are in the mid-2000s, and boom, he's taken off like a rocket. Why? Because his time is due. So God is not going to give you anything premature. And you can be fighting for something and fighting for something, and it never happens. Listen, and you fail to realize it's God resisting you because you're not ready for it. You can't handle it. God promotes some of you, you can't, you can't handle it. God promotes some of you, you think you, you won that day. Jesus. You, you, you'll, you'll be the one to take credit. How did you get that promotion? Well, you see, what I did was I went to school for six years. And after I went to school for six years, then I went and got that degree. And after I got that degree, then I went and done that job. And after I done that job, then I went over there on the side. And all the time, God is sitting up in heaven saying, wait a minute. I'm the one that orchestrated things for you. I'm the one that was pulling the strings in your life behind the scenes. Yeah, you may have had a small part to play, but don't get it twisted. Everything that you have accomplished and everything that you have achieved and everything that you will achieve will be because of the grace of God. always interesting to me. We watch these people on television today with all these millions of dollars self-help books and self-help this and self-help that and they're making millions off of principles from the Bible and they're just not giving God credit. But a lot of stuff they're doing is in the scripture. Amen. So humble yourself therefore in the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Swing over there real quickly. It's already up on the screen. Thank you. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. See, you have to humble yourself. And pray. Uh-oh. And pray. So a lack of prayer in your life is due to a lack of humility in your life. I just helped somebody right there. A lack of prayer in your life is due to a lack of humility in your life. Amen. God just said, if my people would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, he's still not done, and turn from their wicked ways, then, then, after you do all that, after you pray, after you humble yourself, after you seek his face, after you turn from your wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, thank you, Lord, and will heal their land. He'll heal their land. He'll heal your land. Your land could be, sister, it could be your marriage. Your land could be your finances. Your land could be your relationship with your children. Your land could be your employment. God says when you humble yourself and pray, seek my face, turn from your wicked ways, then I'm going to hear from you. And I'm going to heal your land. Amen? All right. Number two. Number two, the second level. Let's see if we can get through this time. The second nugget on humility, humility receives God's extended grace. Humility receives God's extended grace. Thank God for his grace. I said thank God for his grace. Praise the Lord. I mean, 
God has just brought an explosion to the body of Christ over the last couple of months, year and a, year and a half or so, about the topic of grace to the body of Christ. Just brought an explosion. And we need to understand that humility receives God's extended grace. Thank God for his grace. But I'll take as much as he'll give me. I'll take as much as he'll give me. James chapter 4. Come on, real quick, real quick. James chapter 4. Let's look at verse 6. James 4, verse 6. Y'all right? James 4, verse 6. It says, but he giveth more grace. Look at that. He giveth more grace. Everyone shout more grace. More grace. He giveth more grace. Come on, shout more grace. More grace. Come on, shout more grace. More grace. He giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, now listen, here it is. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud. Wow. But gives grace unto the humble. Yes, sir. Amen. He resists the proud. He resists the proud. Some of us, unfortunately, don't realize that things aren't happening in our lives, not because of the devil, but God may be resisting. Right. It's amazing how we always want to blame everything on the devil. He's an easy target, ain't he? How come they say we're about the devil? How come you didn't get that job, that devil? Then you didn't get like Brown for me to brown that devil is a lie. The devil, the devil. We blame everything on the devil. But yet, Deacon, this text is real clear. It says, he gives more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud. God resists the proud. So that means that things in my life may not be working for me, not because of the devil, but maybe because I got some pride in my life. Amen. Amen. And God himself is pushing back against me. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but I believe y'all feel like me. But this type of stuff makes me go to my knees. But when I see scriptures like that, God resisted the proud. Man, I want, okay, God, God, I want things to happen for me. I, I want things that, I want my marriage to go well. I want my finances to go well. I want the church to go well. I, I want your lives to go well. I, I don't want anything to block or hinder. And when I see that, God resisted the proud. The first thing that I do is check my heart. Yes. God, is there any pride in me? Yes. Is there any pride in me? You know, I can be real prideful as your pastor. Because look where we are now in this beautiful facility. We wasn't always here, my brother. I started with eight people. Eight people in my living room. Sharing the scriptures. Ministering to them. Pumping them with the word of God. Filling them up with the word of God. Eight people in my living room. And then, of course, we know the rest of the journey to this point. Mm -hmm. And this particular point, this is a really $2.2 million project mm -hmm. that the Lord blessed us to get for $1.1. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm talking about me now because I want us to all see this. As a pastor, if I'm not careful, if I don't guard my heart, I can walk in pride and think all of this is happening. Because of me. Because if it wasn't for me, none of this would happen. And God is sitting in heaven and saying, hey, you who? Before you get caught up with your pride and your arrogance, don't forget I'm the one that wanted you. I'm the one that called you. I'm the one that sent you. I'm the one that led you. I'm the one that's speaking to you. And I'm the one that's giving you the course of the lesson. You ain't coming up with nothing at yourself. See? And you just throw in whatever it is that you accomplish. Because if you're not careful, you'll be operating properly. You walk to your nice house and it looks nice. Got the furniture and decorated real nice and praise God for that. You roll up in there full of pride and arrogance. Oh, look at this. Oh, look, this is my, this is my castle. This is mine. I better stop since we call it get too busy. Let me hold on to something real quick. 
to my equilibrium from that. <laughs> Thank God for the house. Thank God. Thank God for the house. Thank God for the car. Thank God for the Thank God for all that. But, but listen, God wants me to make sure that I let us all know this. He just brought it back to my attention. Where you live doesn't mean you're better than somebody. What you drive doesn't mean you're better than somebody. Glory to God. Thank God for where you live. Thank God for what you drive. Thank God for the money you make it. But that doesn't make you better than someone else or make them lesser than you. It just means you're operating in grace. All of it, take off of me, You operate in grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Number three, number three. I think you guys got that. Number three. Again, I apologize for the heat up in here. Number three, number three. Humility is the pathway to greatness. Amen. First thing, McGee, I loved it when the Lord showed that to me. Humility is the pathway to greatness. Everybody want to be great. Yeah. Everybody want to be great at something. You want to be great on your job, whatever it is that you do on your job. You want to be great. You want to be the best person. That's okay. That's, that's what I understand. You want to be great. You want to be great. But let me show you in the kingdom of God how to be great. Everyone wants to be great at what they do, but the road to greatness is humility. Matthew chapter 18, come on, quick, real quick. Matthew 18, and let's start with verse 1. Matthew 18, starting with verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest? <laughs> what are you boys with something else? Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Now, now, my brother, this is right after Jesus was telling them that he was about to go and be crucified. That's what he was telling them. Just right after he was telling them that. That he about to go and suffer and be crucified. And they weren't concerned about what was about to happen to him. They asked Jesus, they said, we just want to know who grace. In other words, since you're about to advocate the throne, since you've been running things for all these three years, and we all been following you, Jesus, now you just told us what's about to happen to you. That means your spot going to be vacant. <laughs> so since your spot going to be vacant, I want to know, am I going to be the one that can say, started from the bottom, now I'm here? <laughs> I just want to know, am I going to be the one? Am I the one that's able to sing that? Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? House church, please, please. I don't want to hear anyone in here with that type of attitude. Who's the greatest in the house church? What you mean who the greatest? Ain't no one person in here great. And I do everything I can to lift him up. Because his word is clear. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I draw a man unto me. But they asked Jesus, Jesus who, who, who the greatest? Now that you're about to leave, since you dropped all this on us, who, who's the greatest? Now oh, watch this. Watch how Jesus responds to them. I love the word of God. I know y'all do too. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him. Wow. And set him in the midst of them and said, Verily or truly, I say unto you, except you be converted. Y'all ain't even saved. My <laughs> oh, brother, that's what he's saying. That's what converted me. You asking me who the great, you ain't, you ain't saved. You asking me that type of question, you not even saved. <laughs> and he called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of him and said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as little children. You shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now watch this. He's not finished. Verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So to the same is the greatest. You can humble yourself like this little child. Now I studied this and I studied this and I studied this. My brother and I went over this and over this. Back and forth, back and forth. And I asked God, I said, Lord, how is it 
that he's saying this child, we got to hold ourselves by child. What makes the child the greatest? And the Lord spoke to my heart clear as day, Dad. He said, when I asked the child to come, he submitted himself. That's right. And he came. No resistance, Deacon Matt. No fussing. No arguing back and forth with the master. The master needed him, called him, and the little child came. And then Jesus was able to sit him in the midst and said, until you guys are like this, until you can humble yourself like this and do what I ask you to do, then you'll be the greatest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He saw the force to humble himself as this little child. The saying is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And now that brings us to the last one. Last one. Last nugget. Last humility nugget. Pride goes before the fall. Amen. Pride goes before the fall. The final nugget about humility that we must know is that a prideful heart always precedes a downfall or destruction of some kind in the life of an individual. Mm. Mark it down. Anybody that you see fall is because pride went first. Wow. You know what? You know, as we as we all grow and as we, we all mature in the things of God, you know, one of the things I always share with my eldership and deaconship staff uh, when I, I have time just talking with them casually, I always share with them, I've learned more what not to do over the years in my walk with God. And once I've learned what not to do, what to do becomes easy. And I don't have to keep tripping and stumbling on myself. I just watch other folk do it. And once I see it don't work for you, then I say to myself, note to self, don't do that. Note to self, don't go that way. Note to self, don't have that attitude. Amen? Amen. And so we're going to have to get to this point where we realize and understand that every time we see somebody fall, pride went before them. We look at all the wonderful ministers that have fallen. Pride was involved. Pride went before that. Look at all these wonderful companies out here in the secular world that, that have crashed. Pride. Someone was prideful and arrogant. Okay? All right, Proverbs, let's look at one last scripture. You guys have been so wonderful and you've endured the heat tonight. Can't say that y'all don't love the word. That's what that group that's going to show up on Sunday. Amen? Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. Look at verse 18. Proverbs 16, verse 18. It says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Y'all see that? Read verse 18 and verse 19 out loud, please. Go ahead. Pride goes before destruction. Not the ego. Mm -hmm. 